Academy podcast is released weekly at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, available on our website at www.thenerdacademypodcast.com and wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find the Nerd Academy podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can also help support the show by going to patreon.com forward slash the Nerd Academy podcast, where every donation allows us to bring you more exciting content every week. Hello there and welcome back to Knights of the Nerd Republic, the show where your favorite nerds sit down and talk things, talk all things. I'm going to get this intro right for the first time in July, I swear to God, I've not gotten it right once this month. I get tongue-tied every time I messed up Contender, but it's okay. We're back from camp. It's Nights of the Nerd Republic, the show your favorite nerds talk all things from the galaxy far, far away. See, I didn't mess it up that time. Uh, we got the lore keeper, Connor Chikiti. What's up, everybody? Glad to be here and talk some pretty solid news over the past week, especially the past two days, and just some pretty good Bad Batch. Yeah. Yeah, we got a got got a decent news roundup for you guys this week. It's been a minute since we've had decent decent chunk of news to talk about, and we also have fresh from the Banthaverse, the latest recruit to the Bro Axiom Army, and one of the co-hosts of the Imperial Senate Pod. We got Claire Stribling. Did I say it right? You did. did. Right? Okay, yes. good. Because it was one. Of the, it was that last minute. I was like, I know how to say this, but I'm forgetting <laughs> it on the spot, and I'm not gonna mess this up. That's right. You just got to wing it. It's got to wing it. It'll probably, it'll be close <laughs> enough, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I've gone, I've gone through 23 years of people not knowing how to say Bachman. I, I, I am not doing that to anybody else. I am not putting that on anyone else. Oh, no. I'm not even I refuse about to mispronounce name. names. I cannot I imagine the audio Starbucks cup that your life has been. Especially oh, Connor. Yeah. I feel like there's been some rough times. <laughs> I, I actually can't. haven't been to Starbucks, so like I haven't experienced that yet. Oh man! Keyword yeah. yet? Yet. Yeah. Connor and I both spell our names weird. We both spell our names weird, and both have like in like weird last names. So I yeah. I spell mine weird too. So don't worry. Every nobody spells my name right. Makes I kind of want to do a Starbucks one now, just for the meme of it. Yes. <laughs> Connor with four N's. Yeah, four <laughs> N's, two E's. And just an, they're gonna butcher my last name, and I don't even want to talk about. They're that. gonna put an accent over one of the letters for no reason. <laughs> they probably would. Like I would not be surprised. So. Uh, I Man. love it. Uh, before we jump into the news, Claire, before we get started, where can the lovely people find uh, you and all that you do on the interwebs? Well, you can find me per personally. Is that that's kind of where I'm at? Uh, I'm at Twitter and Instagram on C Strip. On Twitter and Instagram at C Strips. Wow, that was way too difficult. I've caught the tongue tied. I don't like this, Jared. This is your fault. Um, just kidding. Oh, don't worry. The, the the fun part is when you get verbally dyslexic and switch letters around. That oh, that no. that's my that's my bread and butter. Why have you put that into my brain? It's going to happen now. <laughs> um, and then you can find Welcome me on the hell. Imperial Senate. Welcome to hell. Okay, hey, nice in the Nerd Republic. Hey, at least it's good company, though. Am I right? Hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then other uh, Imperial Senate podcast and Bro Axiom. You can find me monthly do the act down on their quick shot team. So yeah, that's what. Absolutely, very excited. Uh, always up to some uh, great, great work all around, all the time. Uh, lovely folks, Imperial Senate Pod and Bro Axiom, um, and then you know, y'all y'all know the Banthaverse that speaks for itself. Yeah. Um, our first little bit of news here up come top, on, on. Uh, not on the happier side of things, but I did want to bring it up so that anybody who is not aware could be made aware. Um, pardon me. Uh, J.W. Rinsler, uh, author of some Star Wars source books, uh, has a GoFundMe going on for some medical expenses. Um uh, he is fighting a very rough battle against uh, pancreatic cancer. The GoFundMe link will be in the description of uh, all the versions of this show, YouTube, podcast version. So uh, if you have time and the resources of which to do it, please go check out his GoFundMe. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's not good that the situation is what it is, 
but there is an entire army of Star Wars fans who are here to help with just exactly this type of situation. So uh, go spread some love, help the guy out. Um, like I said, the GoFundMe link will be in the episode description for and you for guys who... Just that for those wonder, no, and just for those wondering, um, they, his family wanted to raise 50000 and as of the recording of this podcast, um, they've raised, people have donated $55,501. So they've really yeah. just come together. It's been wonderful. Yeah, they, they've already surpassed their goal, and I think everybody would love to see it get even higher up. Um, you know, there's somebody who alone donated 2,500 that I'm looking at right now on the GoFundMe. What? Yeah. Somebody really wow. went for it and we lost Claire, but she has the link. So she will return. I think, uh, hopefully, uh, if not, that was a very fun cameo at the beginning of the show, <laughs> but, uh, just some technical, technical difficulties, folks. We'll be, Hey, we'll be back to normal. It's for just once, like it's not one of us though. For once, it's not right? one of us. Yep. My computer has – that reminds me. I need to check right now to see if it's going to do the thing. I got two hours. I got two and a half hours before my computer decides to, like, not work for a minute. So we got that. We got that locked down. There's no issue. We good. We Gucci. We're, we fine. We're good. We're good. Yep. Um, jumping into – some of our news we have reporting from friend of the show, Jordan Mason, that uh, some interesting stuff going on with uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, preemptive spoiler warning this is a very big leak scoop type report. Um, this is very interesting stuff, nonetheless. Um, from what we know, uh, it sounds like we are going to be seeing a young Leia make an appearance. And that... I want to get the name right of this actor here. Sung Kang will be appearing, allegedly, as the fifth brother. So we got some Inquisitors. When we got young Leia... And we have a quote from Sung Kang, uh, a interview he did with Rotten Tomatoes, uh, where he said, quote, the feeling I, that I get on set is every single crew member, you look in their eyes and it's like a kid going, I grew up watching Star Wars. Like, this is my dream to be here, to see one of the Star Wars characters or Darth Vader characters you, or, you know, or one of the Jedi walking, Jedi's walking around. So... One can read into this statement, and I am inclined to. Same. That it sounds like he has spent some time on set next to whomever is in the Darth Vader suit. And that Darth Vader has been on the show already. Like, he has already been filming some Vader stuff. He's also, you, it's like saying Jedi's. Obviously, we know the plural for Jedi is Jedi, but uh, this man has a life and said Jedi's. And based on the Moses Ingram post that she made not too long ago about her talking about her lightsabers and lightsaber training and such. It seems like we are going to get several Jedi and maybe a few Inquisitors on top of the Dark Lord of the Sith himself. Um which I could not be happier about. I like the sound of this. Connor, thoughts yeah. on this story? I'm because you might have had the same thoughts as I'm about to say, Jared, of <clears throat> when this show was first announced, 99% of people were just expecting basically the Kenobi novel by John Jackson Miller as a six episode series where it's like he spends all his time on Tatooine. I'm going to mute myself. Oh, right on cue. Oh, no, they've been talking. <laughs> Somehow Claire has returned. A communication no. interruption can mean only one thing. Invasion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my um, gosh. 
Wow. No, okay. you're good. No, you're good. You you, yeah. you barely miss anything. I just anything. have to mute just... myself because I live right next to a highway, and just sometimes it gets too loud, and so like that background noise can like permeate into the recording. Um, but to get back to Kenobi, I per thought, and I'm still trying to, you know, come to terms with the fact that like maybe this show isn't just going to be Obi Wan with just his mental state, just dealing with his mental state as, you know, as his failures as a Jedi, with his failure with Anakin and Vader, protecting Luke, just all set on Tatooine. Maybe there's a bit of adventure into it. Maybe he faces Darth Vader. Like, I'm trying to, like, grasp with, grapple with all that, and just maybe, and hopefully, I mean, if I were the writer, but I'm not, thankfully, I would have vader and obi-wan face off i would have obi-wan faced like a spiritual aspect of vader much as such as like in the if you if for the for those listening and what and or watching if you've been caught up with the 2020 um main star wars comic run i think it was issue six luke goes to a temple i can't remember it off the top of my head it used to be an old republic I don't know, a High Republic outpost, and he faces off against the Grand Inquisitor, specifically like a spiritual, the spirit of the Grand Inquisitor, because Vader trapped him there. And so, like, I'm hoping it's sort of that sort of confrontation, but, like, with there being Inquisitors and possibly multiple Jedi, that's really interesting, because, like, Obi-Wan facing off against Jedi just sounds really cool. Uh, and the fact that it's young Leia instead of Luke is really interesting to me because I, <clears throat> sorry, because I think I and just everyone here and everyone listening all thought like, oh, it's just going to be Obi-Wan protecting Luke. But I think, and I would not be surprised if this were the case, Joby Harold and just the story group themselves were probably like, the story has been told with Luke and Obi-Wan. Let's go for a new angle. And this is side Leia. And so I'm really invested in that. Like, that's interesting. I would have never expected, like, an Obi-Wan story set during the dark times to involve Leia and if everything, and if what Jordan is reporting comes true, like, in a decently major way. So I'm excited. Like, and, and I mean, I lost my train of thought. Um, just yeah. the fact that this show is shaping up to be something like more different than what I think we were all accustomed to is both intriguing and kind of like terrifying, not terrifying, but like sort of that just fear of the unknown terrifying sort of thing. Those are just my thoughts. Claire, what about yourself? We were just talking about like, um, some of the reports with Kenobi where like multi, probably multiple Jedi's. Inquisitors, uh, young Leia, and Darth Vader, you know, having some having some scenes filmed already. So, I don't know what what are your thoughts. So, well, first of all, this show is going to be something that blows my mind, and I don't know enough about what's going on over there to to make a really. I I, I don't know where this is going either, and the more that I hear about it, the less that I thought I knew. I actually did, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I know nothing. Ah, that's, but that's so <laughs> exciting. Those are some of my favorite Star Wars stories are the ones that surprise me. Um, that's why I love The Last Jedi so much because I sat down and I left that theater going, none of that was where I thought we were going. Okay, well, that's, uh, uh, wow. This is this is where, this is our lives now. Um, I will Claire say- Claire has the correct take. Claire has the correct take. Yes. Let me just let me do one of these little hair Listen, flip if you're here. Just, if you're, all I'm saying is if you're trying to add another podcast to your belt, you're welcome here. That's what I'm saying. We'll start the TLJ Appreciation Squad cast. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get Alexis on the phone real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Live call in, everybody. Yes. But no, it's but, but with Kenobi, and uh, the more that I'm hearing, the more I'm just surprised. But one thing that I do think is going to be used a lot 
based on what I'm hearing is a lot of flashbacks, a lot of flashbacks, a lot of Clone Wars flashbacks. I think a lot of the show is going to be Kenobi dealing with his own personal demons and feeling like he's failed everybody. I think there's going to be a lot of, um, I think there are going to be a lot of Jedi in this show because we are going to be reflecting on a time where Obi-Wan was surrounded by his Jedi brothers and sisters. Um, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty, it's going to be a pretty interesting ride. I think that we are about to get emotionally punched in the gut repeatedly. And the more that I hear about what's going on, it's going to be fascinating. And I hope there's a Vader Kenobi showdown. I hope there's a, I hope there's there's a little something to like, even yeah. the score before we go into a new hope. I'm like, oh. yeah, and I think like just, <clears throat> I mean, when it was first announced that like Vader was going to be in it, I was like, all right, cool. And then like when everyone kept talking about like, ooh, what if they face off? Like actually face off, not like a spirit fight, like you know, face to face, person to person. At first, I was a bit apprehensive about it because like I was one because I was in the mindset of like, oh, it could. It, it might um, dilute their duel from A New Hope, or like water it down, and then like, re and then like talking with some friends, how like some of the dialogue, not only in A New Hope, but I think in Empire and Return of the Jedi, there's some lines from Vader that's pretty much can that pretty much if you twist, if you, I don't want to say twist isn't the right word, but like for lack of a better term, twist them. Like they can, you you kind of realize like maybe they did face off one exactly one before. I well, sense that, the presence of someone I haven't felt since since yep. when? Probably not Mustafar. Apparently, let's go. Yeah. Ah. So for me, and I know I've said this before, that like my like I like if like if I were behind the reins of this project, uh, my like, my vision for it would probably be like some type of cross between the ver like the idea that um, Christian Harloff gave before and the pitch that Full Fat Videos did in his video essay. Um, fewer elements from the Full Fat Videos version. Uh, most, But like, I, I love the idea. And this is what I've been saying for a minute, especially since we got the, the, the confirmation from the investors call about, um, you know, Hayden's back as Vader. It's going to be the rematch of the century, yada, yada, yada. That it was like, if Obi-Wan is leaving Tatooine to face Darth Vader. And I must say, I will be stunned if they try to find a way to make it make sense that Vader stepped foot on Tatooine and didn't find Luke. Like, I think that is way more unlikely than they, than Obi-Wan was given a reason to leave. And while, yes, I think that we're going to see some of these Jedi in the flashbacks, my money and the reason we're seeing Leia is that Bail Organa has something to do with his leaving. And that has been my theory since day one of this, is that Obi-Wan is presented with the opportunity to take Vader off the board completely. Be that bringing him home or putting him down. And I think Obi-Wan's going into this situation with the mentality of I'm going to do what I didn't do on Mustafar and I am going to try a soft touch because you deserve it. And I'm sorry I didn't give it to you the first time, but if you don't accept that hug, I'm going to cut your goddamn head off. I'm not doing this with you anymore. Like I th and I think that, and I think that is going to lend itself to that torment. Obi-Wan's feeling that he's like, I have one chance to save my brother. And if I screw it up, I have to finish the job this time. And I don't know if I can do it. Ouch. <laughs> you know, but this like, is what I deal ouch. with <laughs> all the time. But like, and I know, listen, I I graduated from the Kevin Scott Academy of making you hurt because of your favorite character. <laughs> um, he's the gold standard for that shit now. Um, but so I, I think it's something to do with that. I think the idea that maybe Bale is like trying to get some type of like enclave of surviving Jedi. It reminds me of the, uh, it was like a le series of Legends novels. It was like Star Wars Last of the Jedi. And it was about Obi-Wan and a bunch of Jedi survivors. And like how they were navigating a post-purge galaxy. And I think that some type of like, I don't want to say adaptation, 
but like something akin to that, that it is Bale, and by virtue that's where Leia comes into the picture, is trying to assemble these Jedi. A young Leia has met Obi-Wan Kenobi, Jedi master, Jedi hero, and that is why she is so reverential with the message in A New Hope. Like do like they have met, they've been in the same room and there's never been the guys of like Ben Kenobi, like the crazy, you know, space wizard hobo who's living in the Junlin waste doing whatever. Leia has met Obi-Wan Kenobi has seen him in battle facing off with inquisitors and or whatever other Imperials are sent their way, seen him fighting side by side with other Jedi Knights. Like that is the angle they're going to go at, and I think we're go- I think we might be looking at something. I'm glad you brought it up, Claire. Akin to the Last Jedi, mm-hmm. I think we're looking at something where you have to square. Here's the human fail. Like here's the failure that comes of being a human. Right here is Obi Wan Kenobi's greatest failure, juxtaposed with here is the Jedi superhero Obi Wan Kenobi, Allegedly. and how he. He a legend and how you square and how, how you square being both, mm-hmm. you know, how you come to terms with, I let Vader happen. And when I had the opportunity to just put him out of his misery, I let him become even more dangerous Ugh. and hero of the Republic and trying to square those two things. That is what excites me. And that is what I've been saying I wanted to see from the show. And it looks like it is shaping up to be just that. That is what's blowing my mind here. Yeah. Because this report. Because I don't know if you guys remember, but apparently the reason some of the early scripts were rewritten for this show was because it was very similar to Mandalorian, where it would just have would have been Obi-Wan presiding over Luke. Mm -hmm. Which still I think would have made for a pretty interesting story, but like if, again, it's just the fact that they chose Leia now. It's just that intrigues me a lot. I get because Leia can keep that secret. Like Leia's mm-hmm. already watching her father like form this insurgent terrorist cell, and I'm not even saying that to like make like the oh the Empire is the good guys joke. Like that's what they are. Like let's call it <laughs> what it is. Like if like if Leia as a kid can like watch that go down and go oh yeah sure, I think she can handle you know. It's a Jedi. There's a few. I know a couple Jedi, and they're gonna do the thing. Um, but like what you were saying, both of you guys, like the dialogue in, uh, in the, throughout the original trilogy, like the way Vader talks about Obi Wan. You know, not just the presence I've not felt since. You know, stuff like you should not have come back. I think, and this is part of my like stealing from full fat. I think that. Obi-Wan fakes his death. I think this fight ends in some form of stalemate, but in a way that he can feasibly make Vader think he's dead. Now, I think I that think is that's part a good of- idea. Yeah. Because he is very that- surprised to sense his presence on the Death Star. Very surprised. But he and would have Tarkin- thought he's alive if, you know, based on that Mustafar fight. He would have thought he's still kicking it somewhere. Yeah. Or it still hunting true. him. Or still trying to hunt him down. Even mm-hmm. Tarkin's like, you don't honestly think Obi Wan Kenobi's still alive, right? Something happens here that makes Vader think he's dead. You should not have come back, uh, you know. Or like, and again, this is where I think that part of Obi Wan's motivation here is: I'm going to try to bring you. I'm at least going to yeah. try to bring you. Obi Wan thought I'm, once. Obi Wan once thought as you do. Yeah. Ah, oh my lord. Obi-Wan did. We haven't really seen it though. Ugh. Until now, until the show, which it premieres, it premieres in 2022, right? I believe so. I think so, yeah. That sounds right. But like there's like a lot there's a lot of cool stuff that is on the table here for them to play with. Um personally, you know, I like you know, the Jedi lightsabers, that kind of stuff. That's my jam. So the more and more lightsaber wielders who are being added to this show, the more excited I'm getting. Um, because if I can get a lightsaber duel a week on the caliber of the blaster fights I've gotten a week on the Mandalorian, 
gonna be a happy boy. It's gonna it's gonna be Stay. a good couple months of Star Wars content for little old me. If like every week it's just like for like a good couple minutes. I'm yep. Yeah, because it's six episodes, and I'm pretty sure they're what supposed to be an hour long. Yeah. yeah. I'm super excited. I'm gonna be a happy boy. <laughs> happy, happy. Uh, but yeah, anybody else, any further thoughts on Kenobi? I just need footage. I just need a trailer, man. Like a sizzle reel, a teaser, something. I need it. We need it. Well, that's, that's another thing. And I'm just going to say this now. Uh, and I think, and I don't know if we're going to do it just for patrons or not, but, um, whenever we're getting closer to Kenobi, just because it's something that, uh, it, it's on the list, uh, for the versus for a Patreon versus series, Spencer and I have literally for years gone back and forth on Vader in his prime versus Obi Wan in his prime, and have never been able to like come to an agreement on it. And I will say I don't classify Vader in his prime, like in the suit until Return of the Jedi. I think that is his peak within the suit and everything that is him in his prime. Um, but the fact that we're going to get like a sliver of what that fight would be like, there's definitely going to be a special episode of the versus series where we are going to give our predictions on how that fight pans out. And we do plan on whenever we eventually get Obi-Wan versus Vader part two, technically there will there, we are doing a straight up fight breakdown for that. And I don't know how often we will be doing that, but it will become a thing. Um, so moving on, we have our latest lineup from wave three of phase one of Star Wars, the High Republic. I got to knock out the other two books. I'm already done with uh, the Rising Storm. I just didn't have any need to consume any more High Republic for a minute after Rising Storm. Um, I'm still hurt, Kevin Scott. You will be getting a. Uh, you'll you'll be hearing from my lawyer. Uh, I'm just. I can't. I can't make it so you can't hear something, Connor. That is what frustrates me. I can make it so that you can't talk. I can't make it so that you can't hear me. And I keep wanting to like complain, not complain, but just be like, be sad about what happens in the rising storm. And I can't, cause I don't want to do you like that. You're my friend. I'm not going to spoil it for you. <laughs> like, I I to chapter 20. <laughs> As you say, it's I haven't, I haven't even touched it yet. I'm so scared. Oh, good. I'm good. so scared. It's incredible. It's like, oh. the, the way I described light of the Jedi now, Claire, I saw you make a joke the other day on Twitter. You're talking about being a recovering theater kid. Yeah, um, it's it's those were dark days. Just kidding. No, yeah. they're 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 mediumly lit. You know, mediumly <laughs> lit. I love that. Are you familiar? Are you familiar with the Titanic musical? Holy! Am I allowed to curse? Am I allowed to curse on this shit? Yes. Can I? Can I? Sh okay. Um. Yeah, wow. I just want you to know that a whole wave of memories just flooded over me having to do with the Titanic musical because the, a leading man of mine was in the Titanic musical and I went to go see him and I am... Okay, please continue. Sorry, sorry. That was like... No, I, I, I feel like Raven asked. and that's so Raven. Whew, I only oh asked because I compared light of... Like like all of the... the, the um, the legacy run disaster stuff to the feeling of the second act of Titanic. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, totally. like everything doing with like the, like the evacuation of, um, mm -hmm. oh, God damn it. What's the planet? I always forget the planet. That's like in the Hetzel direct. In Hetzel. I, everything to do with like the evacuation of Hetzel. Like I, like just for some reason, all I can do is like, I don't get this way into the life, but like, it's very oh. like, like that, that part <laughs> of the show. For, and I, I'm like, and it's like it's evoking that element of the Titanic musical, and it was <laughs> the Rising Storm. It's the same thing, only like, it, like it's like really, really cool and happy and fun for like, at first, and then out of nowhere, it's just like 
the architect's vision where he's like, and here's how everyone's going to fucking die. You know, it was like, <laughs> it's like, it, 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 like, it just goes from that, like, you know, woo, Jedi are cool. <laughs> Is a mass casualty event. Like, <laughs> How close, am I just, how close am I? How close am I to that, to Darren? I'm on I don't 20. know. I don't know how close you are. All I know is you're not ready, because it literally, like, like it, it's like it's it's literally the same tone. It has that same feeling of like abject, complete abject hopelessness. So it just comes. Out, so does it just like come out of nowhere? Yeah. It, it, it ha when it happens, it happens, oh, no. and that's all I can say. Like it, because it... all right, I don't know what all constitutes a spoiler is the other thing, but like it's literally, but like where Light of the Jedi and the Hetzal stuff had the feel of like you know get into the lifeboat, like shit's about to get real, people are going to die, but some of us won't. Who's not gonna die? Rising storm is that immediate. Okay, the lifeboats are gone. <laughs> it's every man for himself. Oh no! When when the shit hits the fan, look, it's that mixed with like Jedi doing hero shit, and then like this is a mass casualty event. Like it's like literally like trying to go back and forth. Like a Jedi will do some cool shit, and then it's like, oh, here's like half a dozen bodies strewn across the floor. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You're like, I feel better. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, <laughs> Not I don't. at all. Stellan, Stellan Geos has like five like hard ass, like I keep saying like, like damn near superhero moments. Like the kind of stuff that would make an audience in a movie theater go wild. And then it is immediately followed up by. And then he turned around and saw how many people he couldn't save. <laughs> It's you're in for a ride. I was I was so excited to start that book, and I'm so scared. I'm scared. Kevin just you kills be. us, man. Kevin's just. I mean, okay, just all the High Republic authors are just ready to destroy us all mm -hmm. because of these titles for Phase Three. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah oh my god i am stressed out and i haven't even finished wave two my goodness so we have midnight horizon from Throwback daniel title, jose older yeah cool ass title um we have mission to disaster by justina <laughs> ireland that sounds fun that sounds like a we have a adventure. yeah we have a Martian Row centric uh, mini series for Mr. Charles Soul called Eye of the Storm. Oh, yeah. Keep cheering, Claire. We'll see how much you like Martian by the end of the goddamn book. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I will tell you, I will tell you, I too was a Martian Ho. I too was a Martian Ho. And then he did this shit he did in this book. Oh, no. I'm so like, like I I love to hate him. I'm already just like, "Ooh, you 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 and I are not going to get along, but you're cool. You're super cool. I res I love yeah, the bad guys. That's what I'm right all about." I'm like, See, I, I like too. I hate you, dude, but you're cool while you're while you're doing it. Like, yeah. I can't, come on. I that's how I was about him in Light of the Jedi, and I can't I I can't get down with Martian like that anymore. Like it's past the point of like, "Oh, you're like you're a bastard, but you're a cool one." It's just like, oh, oh, something horrible better happen to you. Like somebody <laughs> better give you the most vicious death Star Wars has ever seen. Because you do not. Here, Okay, here's my thing. I said this the last time. I'm going to reiterate it. I said it on Twitter. I'm not going to stop saying it. Martian Rowe, for the shit he has pulled, deserves to deal with somebody who's like some Anakin Skywalker levels of unhinged viciousness. Like, he deserves to deal with a Jedi who is not going to give him the kind of mercy all of these other Jedi will that he doesn't deserve. Like, I don't normal. I like, it's like, like. <laughs> I had Kylo Ren tattooed on my thigh. 
Like I can forgive <laughs> some shit, you know, I can let some shit go. I'm a devout Raylo. Okay. Like I can forgive a villain. All right. <laughs> like I, that's not a problem for me is going like, okay, you're a bastard, but you're a cool one. Martian Road deserves to die, and I hope he burns in hell. Like, there's no two ways about it. Like, he needs to be put down. Like, this Honestly. is we're going on two weeks in a row where I've gone on this same exact tangent. But I, I, they've done a phenomenal. He's a phenomenal character. Like, I'm not gonna say he's not a great character, but like, we have crossed the thre a, cre a threshold that I did not know exists, where you can make a villain so much of a bastard that I am like not even in the. Oh man, they're so fun to watch. It's like no. Kill him dead. <laughs> Kill him twice. Honestly, have him survive to the end, till the prequels and have Mace Windu put him down. I'm okay with that. I'm okay yeah. with that. I'm okay with that. I would love that to see it, that actually. Marcia that brings it full circle Mace to Windu. the joke I've been making with like the time to kill. Like, yes, I think he deserves to die and I hope he burns in hell. If Mace win Mace motherfucking Windu is the one to put down Marcian Ro. I will sleep. I will. I'll get a mace tat next. <laughs> You're like, I can wait. I can wait for that. I can wait for that. <laughs> I, can, I will unironically like start standing mace Windu. If that happens. Wait. Like it, once I once I get to wherever you're talking about in the that. book, I'm probably going to text you at multiple points, Jared, because <laughs> I'm probably going to read it after we end. Yep. That's what's up. <sighs> Pain. Any hoozles. The other, the final thing that was confirmed from this High Republic publishing panel was the next book, uh, like the, the, the main line book that will kind of complete the trilogy of Light of the Jedi, The Rising Storm, The Fallen Star. Oh, dear. <laughs> And I have seen speculation that this is referring to Starlight Beacon. And all I'm going to say is that I've had enough Nigh Hills just straight up terrorist attacks. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to go. I know that Starlight Beacon is going to get so devastated. It is. It doesn't stand a chance. Um, but you know what? It'd be like that. It really do be like that. Um, the High Republic's just breaking me. I just, I don't understand how I went from this, like, hopeful and, like, full on, like, Star Wars is beautiful and it's about hope and I love it to just being in pain. Star Wars by George R.R. R. Martin. <laughs> yeah. This is the cycle of Star Wars. It's just hope, pain, hope, pain. It's just the cycle. We're just living in the pain right now. Yep. Basking we're in just it. In the pain. We're just in the pain part. We certainly are basking in it. Thanks, um, Kevin. <laughs> man, Kevin Scott. He's he's hauling ass, man. I just like I don't know how he, he does it. Like he hurt he's me. gotta do um, the comic, like straight up. Cause in the panel he goes, um, to what's the right i just i just destroyed this oh my god what's the right word for it? uh he sums up like the next arc of the high republic comic series with uh, where where is it uh, a jedi joins the storm and like it's the picture of um keep trennis in nihil gear that we've seen before just online and it's just like don't do this to me kevin don't do this to me i i need <laughs> Keeve to like, like I'm pretty sure she's going to become one of the Lost 20 because like her last name is Trennis and there's a Master Trennis who's part of the Lost 20 mm -hmm. and it's like I got to get on with the comics still. That's what I'm behind on. I'm waiting for the trade paper back in August to be out. I thought it, and then I'm gonna, I, I thought it was August and apparently it's releasing in September, but I'll have to check. I was in the comic book shop uh, like two weeks ago, like the day before I went camping and I was trying to get some like reading material for camp. And the guy at the shop said it's slated for August. Other news story here that excites me very much. 
The Mandalorian is leading the pack. It's tied to lead with the crown, but it is leading the pack for Emmys with 24 nominations overall. We got Outstanding Drama Series, Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Drama Series for Giancarlo Esposito as Moff Gideon, Outstanding Guest Actor in a Drama Series, Timothy Oliphant as Cobb Vanth, Daddy, Outstanding Guest Actor in a Drama Series, Carl Weathers as Grief Karga, Outstanding Directing for a Drama Series, John Favreau, Chapter 9, The Marshal, Outstanding Writing, Dave Filoni, Chapter 13, The Jedi, Outstanding Writing for a Drama Series, John Favreau, Chapter 16, The Rescue. Outstanding Casting, Outstanding Fantasy Sci-Fi Costume, Outstanding Visual Effects in a Season or a Movie. Outstanding Cinematography, uh, One Hour. Outstanding Cinematography, Single Camera, Half Hour. Uh, for The Jedi, The Believer, and then this is Outstanding Sound Editing for a Comedy or Drama Series, One Hour, The Jedi. Outstanding production design for a narrative period piece or fantasy program, one hour or more, chapter 13, The Jedi. Outstanding sound mixing, one hour, chapter 13, The Jedi. Outstanding stunt coordination, outstanding stunt performance, chapter 16, The Rescue. Outstanding single camera picture editing for a drama series. Uh, it is that same award and... The episodes nominated specifically are The Heiress, The Jedi, The Believer, and The Rescue. Outstanding period and or character hairstyling, episode 16, The Rescue. Outstanding prosthetic makeup, The Jedi. And outstanding music composition for a series, original dramatic score, chapter 16, The Rescue. Wow. Somewhere I can hear Steel going ape shit for the amount of episodes that the Luke episode is nominated for. And I'm happy for him for it. <laughs> Speaking of the Mandalorian, I just, there was something uh, on Reddit today. The one, there was uh, this one YouTuber, Shamook, who did a deep famous, like sort of quote unquote fix of Luke Skywalker's cameo. And to me, it looks pretty good. Apparently he's actually been recently hired by Lucasfilm as a senior facial capture artist. That's, that's wild. That's, that's bad as hell. Wild. That's cool. I'm, it, it's kind of cool when fans who are like both talented with the stuff that they do show off their work and just get hired by Lucasfilm. That's just really Yeah, cool. I agree. You know, one of the things that I think is wild just about the Emmys this year in general as well is how much of a good year this is for Giancarlo Esposito. Because he's <laughs> nominated for The Mandalorian, like for the supporting actor in a drama series. He is nominated for The Boys, The Mandalorian, and Better Call Saul. Like, he has nominations for all three shows that he is in right now. I can't say I'm that surprised. No. But also, I am just thoroughly impressed. Like, I, I never stop being impressed with Giancarlo Esposito. Like, and it's same. true. Everything that he shows up to, it's absolute pure like professionalism and excellence. Like I there like this poor man who's probably the most pleasant man in real life. If I saw him on the street, I would just feel dread. If I saw him in person, I'd just be like, I am scared of you. I shouldn't be, but uh but because he does such an excellent job. He yeah. does such an excellent job. I'm not surprised. And I'm but I am I am a little surprised though that this that cuz you know with the Emmys a lot of the times it's it's not you know it, marvel and star wars has shown up we all know it and it's been really satisfying for me who has like family that like is kind of like puts their nose up at marvel and star wars to be like oh look at the quality that's being pumped out right now of my stupid nerd things come on like you got to get on it you're going to get left yep. behind this is the future of television I agree with you completely. Also, on the topic of Giancarlo, uh, if you ever want to feel better about his menace and you don't want to feel quite as intimidated by him, this is one of my favorite videos I've ever seen. He's so cute. Oh. 
Oh no, I can't hear it. Tomatoes though. <laughs> I apparently I had no idea that him smiling with tomatoes is a is is the sweetest thing. <laughs> yeah, and apparently there's another story. I don't know. I think it's pretty true, um, but I'll have to look more into it. Apparently, there is a uh, there was a story where like a fan was getting a picture with John Carlo, and she says, "Hey, can you pretend this banana I found outside is a gun?" And John Carlo just <laughs> takes the banana. He's like, well, it is a gun. And she's like, shit, you're a good actor. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, if you look up John Carlo and his, you know, banana, like, there's a picture, like, of him holding the banana up to her head like it's a gun. It's actually hilarious. Hold on, I'm pulling it up so I can put it in the show. That's amazing. And I love, too, that hey, he, he does Giancarlo Carlo theme. Esposito, banana gun. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I love that he's such a goof. I feel like you have to be a, a very goofy person if you are just going to be, to to be the foil to what you show up to work and have to do every day. Yep. Oh, my gracious me. It's just funny, like... For me, at least, when I was when I would ever watch, whenever I would watch like actor interviews with Star Wars or just any other movies, especially with like actors who are like the bad guys, to me it was wild <laughs> to think that like in their interviews they were like some of the nicest people ever. And this was right. like me at like thirteen or fourteen, and it just blew my mind. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> oh my lord. Wow. For those who are listening, if you just Google, well, A, check out the YouTube version so you can see what we're laughing and talking about. But if you just yes. Google Giancarlo Esposito banana, you'll just get wow. gold. So Wow. I know we live in the golden age. Um, also related to Mandalorian stuff, uh, we also had this official poster uh, published by Trends of Luke and Grogu hanging out, and it looks like Grogu constructing his lightsaber. And look at little, little Mr. Man with his yellow kyber crystal. Oh, my God. Oh. It's a really good poster. I don't yeah. think it's, like, what's actually going to be in the story because, like, officially licensed art isn't necessarily canonical. Like, art, so, like, I think this was just something that was... um okayed by lucasfilm but like it's not gonna be something that shows up in the show oh yeah it could be wrong for all intents and purposes like they straight up like grow get you, you a little yellow lightsaber. getting you yep. a yellow lightsaber yeah like for all it's intents and purposes sword. like grogu comes back and just just yellow saber oh my God. and i'm completely that so wrong funny. that would like we're verging into like dude bro territory but like watching the baby just behead somebody would just make me. I, I, think, <laughs> I'd piss my I think I'd piss myself laughing. No frog is safe. Not a single frog. <laughs> I, I need. It. I would love if like Grogu's first words, like he cuts off some stormtrooper's head, and he, um, I can't think. Like it's just like I am your, I, you know. I am your god now, or something yeah. stupid, no, and funny. Like you, you that. know that, you know that TikTok meme going around, where it's like the 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 audio from uh, <laughs> from, from Family Feud, where Steve Harvey is like the crowd going on. It's like kill, ding. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Oh, this is an episode me. where I'm utilizing screen share way This too is much. a wild episode, everybody. <laughs> this is great. This is why you check out the YouTube, like, and subscribe. Give uh, it a thumbs up. Where is it? Hold on. I just got to... Connor <laughs> Vamp. Buy me time <laughs> here. Um, 
I don't know. Uh... <laughs> you know what I was hoping for? And I'm waiting for it to be canon and Connor will understand because he was there present for the Jedi Fallen Order playthrough I did. Pink lightsaber, pink poncho. Everybody pink on pink on yes. pink. I'm waiting for my pink Jedi. Grogu, Grogu has a pink lightsaber. It's my new head I will never forget <laughs> that stream was actually when I found out that Cara Dune was no longer returning. I remember too, because I, I remember the chat was like, hey, like, hey, like, did you hear me? I was like, oh, Charlie, God, I have I to talk Charlie about this said, now. Uh, yeah. Like, Charlie's like, oh, yeah, she's not coming back. And I'm like, oh, this is a joke. And I'm like, wait, is it really? And I went on Twitter, first thing I see, mm -hmm. she's not coming back. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, you, I am like, you guys know what I hope invite. happens. If the... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. You guys oh, know no, what I, I hope happens with Cara Dune, right? <laughs> oh, here we go. I can't hear it, Jared. I don't oh, know no. how, but like. Could it be oh. because I don't know? If, okay, you guys might not be he able to hear it in real time, but it's almost certainly in the episode mix. At least I hope so. I'll find out the hard way once this is posted. Um, nice. Oh, there's our notes. Yeah, there, there are notes. <laughs> um, also, speaking of Cara Dune and the Mandalorian. Um, it's gonna... You don't get an Emmy for being a wooden, horrible actor. She didn't deserve a nomination on moral standing, let alone for her performance. She's not going to notice you, you strange, strange, strange chuds. Let it go. <sighs> Touch grass. Jesus Christ. I don't think that will help them. I don't think it will either, but I did my duty. <laughs> it was put out into my the best. universe. Yes. Manifest or whatever the kids say. Yep. Um, so, Bad Batch. I'm going to let you guys talk because I'm going to be honest. I've not been super into these last two episodes. I... <laughs> I, I've been trying really hard to like love this show. And I've not fallen in love with it. There are episodes that I have liked a lot. And there are character beats and character elements and ideas that are floating around this show. Yep. That but are like really cool. So I, I, overall, I, there's a lot of cool stuff they've touched on, but like, again, for a first season, there's a lot of, I hate using this word, but like, there's a lot of missed opportunity, I think with this show. And for me, at least I couldn't, I didn't know why this latest episode felt so like off to me. Until someone mentioned it, on, either on Twitter or somewhere else, it's just the placement of it. Mm -hmm. Like, if it was placed earlier in the season, and our latest episode was the Ryloth stuff, Ryloth stuff, before, like, supposedly, like, more Camino stuff, hopefully, it would have felt... It would have felt better, I think, in this season because, like, them further in their relationship with Sid, helping her out as she helped them out, uh, stuff with the Pikes. It's all really cool stuff. Again, it's just, for me at least, the big thing was just where it was placed and how it just kind of, it went, like, it just started to, like, the pacing for the last two was like this, and then it just kind of stopped with this latest episode. And granted, that that can happen. That's fine. I feel like there's going to be some payoff with these episode in some either in some thematic or character way, either this season or probably a second season. Uh, like they haven't officially announced it yet, but like I and many others generally, I think we get the sense that there's a second season of this show coming. There has to be, there's yeah. no way they're dragging their feet with the story the way that they are and they are not banking on the second season to make good on some stuff. Like I've said this before, I said it on force connect last week and I need, it needs to be said again. 
and I don't say this as like a slight against this show, against the people making it, or even like the Bad Batch's characters, because I like them. Yeah. I think this show works better without them. I think a version of this show that is built around the Imperial transition, and it is an anthologized version of these stories, which A, makes more sense for us to be meeting people we know every three episodes. Hmm. That you're just hopping around and you're watching the rise of the Empire in real time and how it's affecting the rest of the galaxy. And that you can easily, like, it's like, what have been everybody's favorite episodes so far? You know, it's like been ones that involve other characters showing up in some capacity. So, like, if the pull each week is, oh, look, it's Rex. Oh, look, it's Cad Bane. Oh, look, it's Fennec Shand. Oh, look, it's Hera. Oh, look, it's Chopper. If that's your pull every week... And the rumors that, like, by the end of this season, we're going to be seeing Ahsoka. Mm -hmm. So that'll be the pool. Oh, look, it's Ahsoka this week. Maybe the show functions about the rise of the Empire, maybe not specifically about Clone Force 99. Because I haven't gotten the sense from this show, like, again, at first it feels like, oh, no, what are we going to do? And that's the message of the story. And it's like, oh, we know what we're going to do. We're going to become mercenaries. And then that's the driving force. And it's like, oh, actually, we're going to fight the Empire. Okay, so we're fighting the Empire now. Okay, like, what is the, what, what is, how, how, like, the, the, the premise of the show, like, the vague ass blurb it gives us, like, the day the episode comes out to avoid spoilers, always is something to the effect of the Bad Batch try to find their place in, like, a, in an ever changing galaxy. The galaxy is ever changing. But it feels like how they plan on handling it is too. Yeah. Like, and the I just is changing. The Bad Batch feels kind of static. Yeah. They feel static, but like how they're handling it changes every week. Yeah. Are we mercenaries who only care about ourselves now because we have to watch our backs and this kid's back? Or are we trying to fight the Empire head on? You know, like, I don't know. Like, it's just. They haven't quite yeah. gone all the way in on they're the space version of the A team. Yep. And they haven't gone all the way in on, you know, we want to fight the Empire either. And it's just given me a little bit of whiplash. This episode yeah. wasn't bad, but like uh, it's the placement of it, it's like goes back to that narrative whiplash of just like it goes from oh, we're helping people with fighting the Empire both directly or indirectly to Oh, now we're mercenaries trying to help out Sid it, again. If just the Sid episode, if all the Sid episodes, like I hate to say, because like Sid's a cool ass character, I freaking love her. Like if all the Sid episodes happened earlier in the season, and then just that just carved a path for like, oh, we're now going from mercenaries to fighting the Empire. I think that would have made for a much more clear, thorough line, a through line for that. And the best Sid episodes have been the ones where they are sent to fight the Empire. Mm -hmm. Where, like, the Empire just happens to be who's keeping them away from their money. You know? And that's where I'm like, okay, well, maybe they should just be the AT. But in space. Yeah. I just... I, I don't know. I don't want to be overly negative on this show. Maybe but either. I really don't. Because yeah. I like it. Because yeah, I am enjoying it. Yeah. It just... Like... Like last week, we're not. La yeah, last week with like the 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 end of the two parter on Ryloth. That whole like the mission to hunt them from Crosshair. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, we are back on the Crosshair story. We are back on the Crosshair narrative. What is happening here? And then the next episode, nary any Crosshair. Mm -mm. And, and I, not only without Crosshair, they also promoted it on Star Wars Twitter. Like, watch Crosshair hunt down the Bad Batch this week. There was a tweet about it. And I'm like, uh, they didn't, he didn't do that. He didn't, didn't even show up. <laughs> he didn't so, show did up Did you guys watch the episode? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, be mindful before you tweet. That's a good policy yeah, whenever, really. <laughs> it's just odd. And like, yeah. I've said it before, but like... The last episode, I think I truly, truly just like it res something resonated with me. And it was just from beginning to end, really, was replacements. And like my bias for the writer of it aside, 
just like, I don't know. It was just really the last episode. I really felt just anything really like on the scale of like a rebels episode from season one. That's where I was. Pardon me. As I yawned and turned into Kermit the Frog. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting rather sleepy. This is the second show I recorded today. Um, <laughs> but like the last episode I got super amped up for was uh, the Get Omega back two-parter mm-hmm. with Cad Bane and Fennec Shand. Like, that was the last time I was like, yeah! Like going ape shit for an episode because like, and I spent that entire episode just screaming, yelling, yelling, and hollering Newton because I was like enjoying the shit out of that episode. I haven't had an episode where like the entire time I'm like, oh yeah, oh hell yeah. It's like they they just kind of forgot about the plot, and then it was like, oh hey, hey here here's an episode that's just a rebels prequel. <laughs> yeah, I. I, yeah. I totally get it. I think I've probably connected or enjoyed the show maybe a little bit more. But one thing that I have always, I'm always trying to view this as, um, because every Star Wars series so far has been setting up other things throughout the middle of it. And there's always little people that are dropped all throughout season two of the Mandalorian who were going to get their spinoff shows, going to get their other, you know, like we've found out about these things. And I don't love when they do things in within one particular story to set up different tangential stories. I, I too agree. Like, let's just focus on the story a little bit, but also those cameos are some of my favorite parts of it too. So I'm like, yes, but also, uh, if, uh, yeah, it's the, how it's based on how exactly yeah. and i you know i really enjoyed the Hera stuff i did um i think that what that means to me is that we're going to get in this final showdown because dave filoni wastes nothing i truly believe that he wastes nothing like we got pergil in the rebels finale her we girl came Martez back. Sisters we got the Martez Bad sisters in Bad Batch. Like, exactly. Which is like such they, a cool reveal. Which I was thought. so cool. And and made me feel so good for the people on the internet that would be annoyed by it. I'm like, yes, let it burn. Um, <laughs> but no, like, yep. I don't think he wastes anything. I think that by the end of this season, I think most of these characters are going to come back into play into a way that feels more satisfying for me that we're like, we're co- collecting people we're getting to know. I have a feeling that by the end of the, the se- this season or series, it'll all make sense and it'll all yeah. fit together. But right now it's hard to get there right now. I'm just yeah. like, I want to like, I need the whole picture, but also that's kind of not also like the best way to tell stories either is if it, it all is like, you want to be, interested and have all of it make sense along the way and this hasn't always necessarily done that have i really enjoyed it and had a great time with it yeah am i really salty that i only got two episodes of cad bane and i'm like frothing at the mouth for more cad bane a little bit a little bit but you know it will i i think it'll all come to make sense in the end yeah that, that, i think that's the same thought as a pros, process i can't speak the same thought process I've had, Claire, is that like mm-hmm. just by the once we get to the season finale and we take like and we revisit the rest of the season from beginning to end, it's all like, oh, this is why this plot line went this way and this plot line went that way. Exactly. I think so too. Also, I apologize. The cat sat on my headphones, so let me adjust here. <laughs> you are a okay. I Again, Kitty's always welcome. Um, yeah, no, I, I think it's a very, uh, you know, look at us talking about a th- Oh, Count Dooku. Oh, we, 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 we got a, We got a full screen, Claire. We got the kitty. Yep. You got Come it. on. Come on. He's so sweet. Say hi, Aww. dude. Say, Say hey. Hello. <laughs> we got our purple polka dot bow tie on today. Show it off. Come on. Oh, oh, look at you. Oh, good God. Handsome devil. Very sleepy devil. Oh, good boy. I I, I relate to that. (laughs) Real quick, and I need, okay, don't answer honestly. I don't want any of you to spare my feelings on this. 
good. I won't. Just kidding. I am. It has been 12 hours since I have learned the reality of whom does the voice of Hondo Onaka. I thought that was a Steven Stanton job. Really? I thought that was Stanton. Has your life been shattered? That your I, Pooh Bear is your Honda? Hon Honda. That your Hondo. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> um, yeah, no. So, oh, yeah, I background. always forget that it's not Stanton. I mean, I knew it wasn't, but I just couldn't remember the guy's name. I thought it was Steve Stanton. Like, if I was doing some form of Clone Wars trivia, like, 12 hours ago, and it was like, who does the voice of uh, Captain Hondo Onaka? I would have, with confidence and gusto, said Stephen Stanton. I always I can't believe it. I always, what's, what's the actor's name again? The voice actor? Jim Cummings. Jim Cummings. Winnie the goddamn Pooh. Wait. Winnie the Pooh. What? Okay, oh, this my is God. Your worlds are being too. shattered. So I didn't know this. So Steel City Comic Con, the, like the like the local convention, that like a lot of like the this part of the Nerd Academy, like the Late Road people go to. Um, earlier this week, announced that Tom Kenny was going to be at the convention. Voice of SpongeBob for those of you unaware. And me, Alexis especially, going ape shit. Like, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Well, then yesterday or the the, the day before. They announced that for what, like, Tom County had, like, a family thing come up. He's like, I can't make it to the convention in August. And so City Comics like, okay, we got good news and bad news. Bad news, Tom Kenny can't come. Good news? We have another voice actor guest who's going to blow your goddamn mind. And then they were like, boom, Jim Cummings, Winnie the Pooh, come get it. And last night I was, like, watching some Schmodown stuff, and I was on the phone with Alexis, and she was just, like, reading through – Jim Cummings like body of work and in the back of my mind I'm like he has a Star Wars credit somewhere I was like I know he's been in a Star <laughs> Wars what the hell was he and then I googled it and like screamed <laughs> he he's I not had, just been in a Star Wars on air. I didn't know this either this is insane this is wild yeah, Winnie the Pooh is Hondo Onaka. I need Which to means see Winnie the Pooh cosplay Hondo in some I need, reality. I need. I want to hear somebody get him to do like like flip flop the voices for the characters, like naturally like so badly. Have like Hondo given Oh bother? Yeah. yeah. Oh bother, Kenobi. <laughs> Amazing. That is. Oh, we're pirates. We don't even know what that means. Um, <laughs> that's probably my favorite Hondo line. Same. That's what I said last night. Because apparently, Alexis said that she and Travis have started rewatching Clone Wars. Because Travis only caught Clone Wars here and there, and like Alexis is like trying to go back and rewatch all of it. And that like literally the day the Jim Cummings thing was announced, they got to the Dooku captured arc. Ugh. And I was like, that's. It's like poetry. It rhymes. Um, uh, I he's just so funny. Like when I was a kid, I wasn't that into Hondo, and like now that I've gotten older, when I've like rewatched Clone Wars, I'm like, this is this is like really funny. Yeah. This has no right being this funny. Like this is kind of dumb, but I love it. We are pirates. We don't even know what that means. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I think that's all we have this week. Uh, one more time, Claire, can you please tell the lovely people where they can find you and all that you do? Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Stribs, and you can catch me on the Imperial Senate Podcast Weekly. We do a Bad Batch breakdown on YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch called The Bad Betches. That's every Sunday, so get ready for that. Um, you can catch me monthly on uh, Broaxium. I'll be doing quick shots of each new Dr. Afra comic, which is great because she's perfect and weird and crazy and devious, and I love her. And am I forgetting something? Oh, I started Twitch streaming again. So uh, Imperial Center Podcast, Tuesday nights. going to be it, – it won't always be Battlefront 2. It'll be uh, whatever I feel like or whatever Twitter poll tells me I'm playing that week. So it'll be exciting. 
Uh, yes, please go check out everything Claire does. Claire's one of my favorite people in the Star Wars pantheon of people. Um, Same. So, yeah, check out everything she's up to. Uh, speaking of live stuff, I'm not going to make any, like, overarching, like, commitment announcements yet. But there might be be a thing starting soon on Fridays here. Sizzle. Nate. I wish I could impersonate him as half as well as I think I did. <laughs> a little bit of sizzle. Sizzle. I can't I can't do the Australian I can't just do an Australian accent for one word. Like I need like a whole ass sentence to like <laughs> Aussie the shit out of it. I can't just do the steel. A little bit of sizzle. I, I can't. I'm at this point, it sounds like I'm making fun of him, and I respect that man too much to keep trying to impersonate him that badly. Um, Connor, where can the lovely people find you, good sir? Uh, they can find me on Twitter at Depa Banana, Instagram at ConmanJFO, Facebook. I admin this group called the Alliance of Star Wars Fanatics, Tal Swift for short. If you need a positive Star Wars Facebook group to just chat Star Wars without being without having to worry about um, being hounded. For your chuds. opinion, um, that's the group. We keep out the chuds as much as possible. Uh, you can also. I don't find think I've me. confronted a chud in Tal Swift. I don't think I've I've encountered a chud in Tal Swift. That's because that's uh, probably because I've banned most of them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, you can also find me very slowly, and I mean very slowly, writing articles on StarWarsEditorIG.com. If you haven't yet. Go check out my latest one. It is an interview piece that I did with Matt Mcnovitz, uh, and I talked to him about his work on Jedi Fallen Order. Which will there will be a video version uploaded to our YouTube channel uh, very soon as hopefully. well. Hopefully, yes. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Jared looks at you like. Yeah. No, I, I, I forgot we were. I forgot we were waiting for. A, I forgot why I haven't uploaded it yet. Um, and he was like, we're, we're supposed to waiting for like the final okay to put the video <laughs> out. And I forgot. So if we don't end up with a video, you guys can take that up with Lucasfilm. It's not my fucking problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not oh, our also, fault. Also, final hot take. As much as I didn't like this episode of The Bad Batch, and I normally don't like talking like this about cartoon characters, that Daveronian was kind of hot. Just a little yes. bit. Yes. Like, the cheekbones on that guy. The cheekbones. Ooh. Ooh. My a, goodness. He's a and, good looking dude. And on the other hand, Jared, I have no problem talking about cartoon characters like that. If you have anything, any idea of how I've spoken about Hauser over the last two weeks. Okay. So. I mean, it's oh, not a shame here. Also, I can't blame you. Hauser is also a rather handsome piece of animation. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They did pretty good. I think they that should replace job. the term piece of ass. I think piece of animation should replace the <laughs> piece term of piece of animation. ass. Piece of animation. I'm cool with it. Let's get it going. <laughs> yes. I say that like I don't take every opportunity to call all of the men within the Nerd Academy a piece of ass. I'll never give it the chance. But. <laughs> piece of animation, I think it just feels better. A little bit. A little bit better. <laughs> no, there's something yeah. inherently funny about objectifying Levi. There's something just inherently hilarious about he walks up like, look at this fine Italian piece of ass. Um, oh he's, he's, he's part of the Dago squad. See, I can say that word. Um, I am still not over. Oh, I was on I was on uh, Jerry from Bombad Cast, his new uh, interview show, Hyperfocus. Absolutely great. I had a wonderful time on Hyperfocus. Um, uh, for those of you at home who watch this show, who are aware of us making Italian jokes all the time, because uh, more than half of us are Italian. Um, I may or may not have like gotten really excited to call Jackson a Dago, and then it immediately occurred to me that he did not know I was also Italian, and the look of sheer confusion was the funniest <laughs> part of that stream. Because I just went, hey, hey, Dago! And he just kind of went, 
He's like, this is what we're like, doing. Oh, no, 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 isn't no, 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 no. I can say that. I get. I'm. A, I, was like, I was like, I know Bachman Stubb sounds German as shit, but my great grandmother's name is Mencio. Like, I come from the <laughs> Pasta Squad. Don't worry. Like, it's okay. <laughs> I, oh, I was goodness. so embarrassing. I was like, I need to say something before I get canceled. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I just strutted on the Jerry's new show, and it's like, all right, bud. You ready for me to use an ethnic slur? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Gonna get canceled by that old timey racism. <laughs> <laughs> Not even of this era. Now that is a challenge and uh, honestly a talent, good sir. Yeah. Well done. It's like, well, I've already come out. So it's like, there's a whole slew of horrible things I get clearance to say on that front. So like, all I really got left is saying like making Italian jokes. Um <laughs> Oh God! Oh, that, I I just the, the deer in headlights face he and I both had at each other. All that was missing was like the thinking music from Death Note. <laughs> oh my God! Just Dago. Do 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 do. I'm Italian too. Anyway. <laughs> you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram uh, using old timey ethnic slurs at Dark Jedi twenty five fifty two. You can find the Nerd Academy podcast, a podcast network full of dagos and wops, <laughs> at Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and on our website www.dagonerds.com. No, it's the Nerd Academy podcast.com. <laughs> where if you're feeling generous, you can donate to our Patreon page. Speaking of our patrons, thank you to our $10 alumnus, Case and Brian, the Waffle Wizard, Delta 9, Zach Knaus, Michael Armburst, and never going to give you up, never going to let you down, never going to run around to desert you, never going to make you cry, never going to say goodbye. I apologize. I looked at our Patreon before we started this show, and I realized that you had more in your name uh, so I'm sorry I forgot about the uh, say goodbye and make you cry parts of it. Um, yes, Claire, there is somebody who subscribed to our Patreon at the $10 <laughs> level, the tier where you get shouted out at the end of every show, all five that we do in a week. And their name, is it, it literally is just never going to give you up, comma, never going <laughs> to let you down, comma, never going to run around and desert you, comma. It's just that I whole don't know who you wow. are. I don't know who you are. And I, like I said on number one contender, it is my mission to run your joke into the ground. <laughs> I, am, I, am inter I am entertained by it more and more every time I do that. And eventually one of us is going to find it annoying. <laughs> eventually gonna be we're going to find who you are. We're going to figure out who you are. Because <laughs> you're going to change your name. And I'm still going to keep playing... <laughs> Rick roll at the end of the goddamn shows. <laughs> you did this. You made me do this. He's never going to give this up. He's never going to let him down. He's never going to let him down. Never going to say goodbye to this joke. No, that's a hell no. <laughs> but he is going to I have no self control. Around. I commit to the bit. <laughs> um, be sure to consider the $5 tier. Uh, where you get access to the Knights of the Nerd Republic Versus series. Our latest episode should be out Monday evening. We're doing Yoda versus Darth Treya. Very excited for that one. Uh, Heroic History 101 should be back soon with Batman 3 Jokers. Nerd Academy Movie Club is also back. If you subscribe at the $10 tier, you get that in Campus Life a week early. And our review for Space Jam A New Legacy is out now on our for our $10 patrons. <laughs> what what a movie that was good I can't what a movie so that i enjoyed a hundred percent ironically um i on i unironically enjoyed it that was i'm glad you did and that, that, yeah. that's the thing with movies like this and with movie club or like any movie review i feel bad like there are some movies that are really really easy to just beat the shit out of Yep. And then there's a part of me that feels bad. But like I hope I hope there like most people, like when I like the way I went in on Space Jam, the way I went in on that children's movie. Um I hope people have as good humor with that as like I do when I hear people do reviews of Batman versus Superman 
where it's like, I get why you want to make fun of it. I like it and I make fun of it. So let's just have fun ragging on this dookie movie. Um, but Connor, I'm glad you liked it legitimately. I was laughing the entire time. So like, I liked it too. Yeah. Just not in the way they wanted me to enjoy it. Um, at least I don't think that was the intended result, but that's out. Uh, yeah, and then the audio commentaries, and I think pretty soon we're going to be getting down to Indiana Jones Month on Movie Club. Uh, so the plan for Movie Club is we're going to start having our like we're bonus episodes uh, that will be reviews of just like movies that are coming out, um, and then we'll have like our like the Movie Club movies uh, that will be you know the monthly theme. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Be sure to check out the student store link on the website to get to our Tee Public and get all manner of Nerd Academy merch and goodies. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, do all the things. We are honored that you have joined us. Thank you very much again, Claire, for stopping by. It's been a blast. Thanks for having me. And may the force be with you always. Come away from the cookie jar.